Is World War III on the horizon? The answer we might not want to hear is maybe or possibly. But if a global conflict were to start now, what would it be like? Which countries would join and who would be most affected? Let's hear from our military experts. The reason the United States and other NATO countries have been hesitant to send advanced, long-range weapons to the Ukrainian military is to prevent the escalation of the conflict. They do not want to see the war escape Ukraine's borders and become a wider, greater power struggle over a much broader area, or in other words, World War III. Ukraine is not the only hotspot in the world, however. Russia's aggression, China's continued attempts to expand its power beyond its borders, and the actions of other countries in their orbit like North Korea have significantly altered the international balance of power in the last 15 years. Great power competition has returned after the post-Cold War slumber, and with it, the flashpoints that stand at the cross-section of these competing great powers. If World War III were to break out in this decade, it would be between two sides. One would be a democratic alignment led by the United States. The other would be an authoritarian group of countries led by China and centered mostly in the interior of the Eurasian landmass. If a general conflict were to break out between the two alliances, these are the countries likeliest to become the fronts in the war and therefore likeliest to be wrecked in the process. To begin with, we are assuming that any new war between these two alliances will not, at least at first, escalate into a nuclear exchange. Presumably, the leaders of all the countries involved would have no wish to see themselves destroyed along with the rest of human civilization. World War III would probably remain conventional, at least in its initial stages, because the leaders of the countries involved in it would want to gain something out of the hostilities. Not all countries would be equally affected by World War III either. The conflict would mostly take place in hotspots in Europe and Asia, where the two alliances intersect, very much like tectonic plates grating against one another. Ukraine was only one hotspot in the growing great power competition. All of Eastern Europe would be in danger in World War III. However, the perils of a Third World War would be particularly concentrated and devastating in the countries along the Baltic Sea. Russia has long resented the independence of the three Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, which broke away from Moscow's control following the Soviet Union's collapse. These countries joined NATO in 2004. The Kremlin would like to bring them back into its orbit and project more power into the Baltic. You can therefore bet that Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania would be a major battleground in any war between Russia and NATO, and they would be wrecked in the process. Although the Baltic states benefit from Article 5 protection under the North Atlantic Treaty, they still border Russia and would be outnumbered and outgunned in the event of war. The initial phase of the conflict would prove devastating to their armed forces as Russian troops, tanks and air power concentrates over a much narrower front than the initial invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, which saw Russian power divided along four very broad fronts thanks to Ukraine's huge size. The Baltic countries, by contrast, are small, and the Russian invasion of them would not be divided along several fronts, but concentrated in a straight drive from Russian and Belarusian borders to the Baltic Sea. This would also relieve some of the pressure on Russian logistics, which proved so much of a problem in Ukraine. Lithuania may be the most vulnerable country of the three Baltic states, because it shares extensive borders with the heavily armed and fortified Russian outpost of Kaliningrad to its west and Belarus. Russia's closest ally in Europe to its east. In a World War III scenario, Russia would almost certainly attack in a pincer movement eastward from Kaliningrad and westward from Belarus through the Sawalki Gap, the 100-kilometer stretch of border between Poland and Lithuania that stretches between those two points. Doing so would cut the land route between the Baltic states and the rest of NATO's territory, depriving them of reinforcements and supplies over land. This move would leave Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia isolated and much more vulnerable to Russia's offensive westward to the Baltic. NATO forces might be able to eventually break through the blockade, but by the time they do, all of the Baltic states would be wrecked, with Russian troops occupying them and entrenching themselves there. The Baltic states would suffer even further damage in whatever takes place there between Russian forces and NATO reinforcements once they arrive, so even if NATO wins and manages to force all of the Russian troops in the Baltic states back to their pre-war boundaries, these countries will still turn to rubble in any World War III scenario. Another country that would certainly be wrecked in World War III is Taiwan, which is probably the world's most contentious hotspot. 
It sits at the center of the first island chain, the string of islands from Japan to Indonesia, which are the linchpin of the United States' strategy to contain China's military expansion. Taiwan is also home to the world's most advanced semiconductor industry. There are political reasons for Taiwan's importance too. Mainland China wants to bring Taiwan back into its orbit for historical reasons, as it considers the island a rogue province left over from the civil war between the communists and nationalists. Taiwan's reintegration with mainland China is one of Xi Jinping's ultimate aims, one he wishes for the Communist Party of China to achieve by 2049, the centennial of its victory over the nationalists and its rise to power. Much of the debate about Taiwan centers on whether the Chinese military could pull off an amphibious invasion of the island, something which would be very difficult for it to do. Amphibious operations are, and always have been, one of the most complicated and difficult military maneuvers to pull off. To make matters worse for the Chinese, surprise scenarios like the D-Day landings at Normandy in 1944 are all but impossible in the age of satellite surveillance. Its attempt to invade the island would be known for a long time. However, this is not a panacea. Even if China is unsuccessful in its invasion operation, Taiwan would still be wrecked in the process. China has thousands of ballistic missiles in its arsenal, and even if these are not armed with nuclear warheads, conventional explosives would still be far more than enough to devastate their target country. In a World War III scenario, many of these missiles would be launched at Taiwan to strike critical assets, military bases, government offices, civilian infrastructure like power plants, strategic industrial centers, and so on. China demonstrated its ability to do this in the summer of 2022, after a visit by then United States Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. The visit led to several days of military exercises that included missiles striking the seas north, south, and east of Taiwan, with some of the missiles landing near Japan. In a World War III scenario, a rain of Chinese missiles would devastate Taiwan even if a land invasion fails to occupy the island. Air defense systems would intercept some of these missiles, but not all of them. Taipei, the Taiwanese capital, would almost certainly be reduced to rubble from Chinese air and missile attacks, and other cities would feel the heat as well. Taiwan's major military bases would be destroyed or seriously damaged. Millions of civilians could potentially be impacted, and many billions of dollars in damage would accrue. Meanwhile, other countries would feel the knock-on effects. Since Taiwan is currently the world's most advanced manufacturer of the semiconductors at the heart of the digital economy, the impact to the economic and financial systems of other countries would be harrowing. If we think the global semiconductor shortage is bad now, one need only imagine the impact that the complete destruction of the supply chain coming from Taiwan would have on the global economy. Taiwan would almost certainly be wrecked if World War III were to ever break out, even if China cannot cross the strait. Taiwan is not the only country in the region that would suffer severe damage. Competition in the hotly contested South China Sea has intensified in the past decade, making it one of the world's most dangerous hotspots. Around the middle of the 2010s, China began occupying the South China Sea and building highly militarized artificial islands, with 20 outposts being in the Paracel Islands and 7 in the Spratly Islands. Some of these islands have airstrips and can carry Chinese missiles. These islands have proven dangerous obstacles to freedom of navigation in the South China Sea, but they have also brought China into dispute with its neighbors in the region, most often the Philippines and Vietnam. International courts have rejected China's claim that most of the South China Sea is its territorial waters based on the so-called Nine Dash Line, a map which originated in 1947 that supposedly backed up China's historical claims on the Paracel and Spratly Islands. The controversy has even extended to Hollywood, as Vietnam has banned the popular Barbie movie from its cinemas over a scene supposedly depicting a map featuring China's territorial claims in the area, showing just how sensitive the controversy is in the region. The South China Sea has enormous strategic value, as 21% of global trade, a total of nearly $3.4 trillion, transited the trade routes in the area in 2016. Geopolitically, whichever country controls the shipping lanes there can potentially cut its rivals off from the supplies coming through these waters. In this light, China's expansionist actions in the area can be seen as an act of self-defense, since the country is very dependent on food and energy imports. Conversely, China's tightening grip on the trade routes threatens to cut vital supply chains to Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and other American allies. If World War III were to break out, the countries along the South China Sea may not suffer damage to the extent that the Baltic states, Taiwan, or others we will look at later would, 
but they would surely be caught in the crossfire, especially if they were to join the coalition led by the United States in an attempt to dislodge China from the waters of their respective exclusive economic zones. China's People's Liberation Army Navy PLAN, would use the South China Sea bases to attack hostile forces in the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia and other countries which would likely join the anti-China coalition. Air raids and missiles would take a heavy toll on these countries, especially their coastlines. Military bases in the interior of those countries would also become targets. They may not be central battlegrounds in the conflict, but all of these South China Sea countries would suffer. But World War III would also take place on a front far further to the north, and one country that would suffer almost complete destruction in a World War III scenario is South Korea. In a full-scale World War III scenario, it is certain that conflict would once again break out on the Korean Peninsula. Although the two countries have had disagreements and standoffs in the past, North Korea is still, at the end of the day, a vassal state of China. It is completely dependent on the Chinese economy for its continued existence. Without Chinese support, North Korea would not be able to produce the most basic of goods. Therefore, when push comes to shove, and it would in a prospective World War III, it must do what China says. In World War III, China would want to tie down as many American forces on the Korean Peninsula as possible and prevent them from reinforcing Taiwan and the South China Sea or other fronts that are more important to its strategic goals. North Korea would therefore be used as a cat's paw to help make this happen, and South Korea would be caught in the crossfire as part of China's plans. Aside from its dependency on China, the North Korean regime has always maintained that it is the legitimate ruler over the entire Korean Peninsula. For historical reasons, North Korea would take advantage of the breakout of a global conflict to satisfy this claim. Although South Korea's land border with North Korea at the Demilitarized Zone DMZ, is the most heavily fortified piece of land on Earth, this does not mean it would be able to escape the destruction of a renewed Korean conflict, even if North Korea is unsuccessful in its attempt to cross the DMZ. North Korea has thousands of conventional artillery pieces along the DMZ pointed straight at Seoul, the South Korean capital which is only a few dozen miles away from the border. Some of these North Korean artillery assets would be destroyed in the opening hours of the conflict, but many of them are well hidden, and American and South Korean forces would be unable to destroy enough of them to save Seoul. In a full-on bombardment of Seoul, a RAND Corporation estimate from 2020 suggests that up to 200,000 people in the South Korean capital could die from the North Korean artillery attacks in the first hour alone. Millions more would probably die in the sustained bombardment even if there are evacuations in place. Seoul's population is about 9.6 million as of 2022. Many of these people would become casualties from the barrage of nearby concentrated artillery. The humanitarian damage would also sap resources from the South Korean government and its allies, which could not be put into the war effort. The financial damage, too, would be catastrophic, not just to the South Korean economy, but to the global economy. South Korea is home to some of the world's most valuable companies like Samsung, LG, and Hyundai, the loss or disruption of these companies would do significant damage to global supply chains and devastate the South Korean economy. As the 20th century came to a close, South Korea was touted as one of the world's foremost economic miracles, emerging from poverty and dictatorship into a wealthy industrial democracy with stunning speed. If war were to ever break out again on the Korean Peninsula though, which it almost certainly would in a general conflict between the United States, China and their respective allies, South Korea would not survive in its present form. Even if the North does not use its nuclear weapons and if it's unable to get past the fortifications at the DMZ. Meanwhile, North Korea would be at least seriously damaged in a renewed Korean conflict as well. Its air force is hopelessly outdated and the United States and its allies would quickly establish air superiority over the war zone, and help from China would not be as high as the North Koreans would desire. As North Korean troops get decimated by the air and firepower of their enemies, it's likely that the regime would resort to nuclear weapons, and if needed, the American, South American and other Allied forces may hold back from invading the North far past the DMZ for this reason. If any front in a World War III would be the likeliest to see the use of nuclear weapons, it would be the one on the Korean Peninsula. Elsewhere in Asia, Japan would also suffer major damage in a World War III scenario. The country hosts dozens of American military bases, especially on Okinawa, and these bases are easy targets for China's ballistic missile arsenal. In the event of World War III, it is certain that they will be attacked by these missiles. Furthermore, Japan has a territorial dispute with China over the Senkaku Islands in its southern reaches. It is possible that these islands will become battlegrounds in an attempt to tie down Japanese and American resources away from Taiwan 
and other important fronts. Japan also has a territorial dispute with Russia over the two southernmost Kirill Islands far to the north. Although a Russian invasion of Japan would probably be out of the question, Japan would need to keep a watch on Hokkaido, the northernmost of its main islands. North Korea too has a penchant for testing ballistic missiles over Japanese waters and airspace. North Korea's barrage against American and presumably Japanese bases would add to the damage and prevent supplies and reinforcements from crossing the Sea of Japan to the Korean front. Okinawa would be devastated by missile attacks. The main Japanese island of Honshu would also suffer damage, as there are several American bases there as well. To prevent buildup of troops and supplies in Japan, Chinese and North Korean missile attacks may strike over a much broader range. It's likely that in a full-scale World War III scenario, all of Japan would suffer from conventional missile strikes. It is certain that China and North Korea would care little for striking civilian areas in Japan, just as their ally Russia has shown how little it cares in attacking civilian areas in Syria and Ukraine. If a general war were to ever break out in the region, it is likely that catastrophic financial damage and civilian casualties in Japan would result. Tokyo is the world's largest metropolitan area and home to 37.2 million people as of 2022. An attack on Tokyo would make even an attack on Seoul look tame by comparison. Forgetting for a moment the purely military value, the damage to morale, supply chains, and the tie-down of resources in dealing with the carnage would create significant value for China and its allies. Although an actual ground invasion of the Japanese mainland is unlikely on any front, air and missile attacks would devastate the country in World War III. Thus far, we have spoken of countries in the democratic bloc led by the United States as being the ones most likely to suffer terrible damage, but the authoritarian bloc would also suffer. Belarus would likely come into the crossfire. In the initial phase of the conflict, Russia's numerical superiority in the Baltic theater would likely overwhelm Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, even if the initial assaults are costly for the Kremlin. But as NATO reinforcements arrive from the United States and Western Europe, they would try to retake the lost territory along the Baltic. Poland would certainly see some damage. Military bases there would prove easy targets for Russian missile attacks. Russian bases in Belarus, though, would be equally damaged in NATO missile attacks. Belarus would likely become a battleground, as NATO forces coming from Poland look to lance through the Russian lines at the Sawalki Gap. A flanking maneuver through Belarus would be one option to break through the Russian land blockade of the Baltic states. Although such an operation would see heavy fighting only in Belarus's western areas, it would still do devastating damage. Meanwhile, China itself would suffer severely too. Although an actual invasion of mainland China is highly unlikely, Chinese cities like Beijing would suffer badly from ballistic missile attacks. China is not the only country that has such missiles. As in other densely populated urban areas, hundreds of thousands or millions of civilians could lose their lives. The United States and its allies like Japan and Australia would be far more averse to attacking civilian population centers than China and its allies. But a Taiwan under Chinese bombardment would likely not view things the same way. As part of its porcupine strategy, Taiwan is amassing missiles that can penetrate deep into the interior of the Chinese mainland. These missiles would first be used to target military assets, but Taiwan would have little reason to hesitate to use them against areas in major cities as China targets sites in Taipei and elsewhere. China's enormous size and well-defended inland positions means it would not suffer the worst effects in World War III, but it would not be isolated from the conflict especially since the areas around its territory would be some of the biggest hotspots. But what do you think? Which countries would see the heaviest damage in a conventional World War III? Don't forget to let us know in the comments, hit that like button and subscribe for more military analysis from military experts.